so you have had a very interesting journey pepper a lot of people kind of get lucky and get into roles such as amazon right after college you have had a little different journey you have worked with us and i'm sure you have done other internships as well could you shed a little bit light on what are the starting salaries for amazon for someone let's say who's just starting out of college the exact figures i think like it's industry wide same and it can be easily found on the internet average. what is the number number is around you can say it's... there is a huge trend of remote jobs in the world of software development people are selling this dream that you could learn software development and then get paid on us dollars for the us jobs as well what is your observation based Based on now that you are in this industry, how real is this and how practical is this? If I have to tell about remote jobs, then yes, like it's there. Amazon was using machine learning algorithm for thousands of applications for careers that were coming to them. And because Amazon historically had male engineers, the data set that Amazon had to train the machine was to actually predict that women were actually getting eliminated from the application portal itself because the data was just predicting what was there in the past right so i just thought that this is a great example to teach someone what could be an example of machine for cs graduates the coursework is actually not sufficient enough like if you want to get into the industry hi would you like to get a good coding offer from Amazon or would you like to know how to become an artificial intelligence or a machine learning engineer right from scratch or would you like to know how to get abroad jobs in the world of software development then hi welcome to the new episode of the Shatakshi show in the Shatakshi show series i've been talking to a lot of interesting and varied professionals from the world of coding to people who have cracked Harvard Business School, to people who have been in private equity, and a lot of other CEOs and CXOs as well. And in this particular episode of the Shatakshi Show, I'm going to be talking to Webhav. Webhav has been associated with my organization since a long period of time, and has solved a lot of interesting projects from the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And if you are new to the entire episode of the Shatakshi Show, feel free to hit on the subscribe button, and I really hope that you enjoy this episode of Shatakshi Show. All right, Pebha, welcome to the Shatakshi show. Very excited to have you. We have had a very meaningful uh, professional relationship with uh, you contributing to the organization and learning with us as well. I know you personally, but uh, why don't you introduce yourself in your own word to the world who will be watching you? So I'm Bebha uh, Saikya. So basically, uh, I have completed my graduation this year, uh, 2023, from National Institute of Technology, Silchar. So I did my engineering in electronics and communication engineering branch. So basically I am a software engineer, like as you must have guessed. So I will be joining Amazon as a software development engineer in their like SD1 role after like a couple of weeks from now. So yeah, so that's basically me. Got it. Thanks, Pepper, for that uh, brief introduction. So, of course, we'll double click on a lot of things that you said about education, about Amazon. And uh, this particular podcast is going to be focusing a lot upon AI and ML, and especially someone who is just starting his or her career in AI and ML. How can he or she go about learning the skills and eventually picking up projects and jobs as well? But uh, right off the bat, let's start with education. You talked about your NIT education. How did your education prepare you? or rather not prepare you for jobs such as with GGI and with uh, mm -hmm. tech giants such as Amazon as well. So like if I tell you about my educational journey right since my childhood till now, so I would definitely say yes, like uh, it did help me get to wherever I am at the moment and, uh, and to make the person who I am today. So like I would say that it had contributed in like skills like problem solving, analytical skills and uh, communication skills and even like you know mathematical skills that type of things so so these are I believe that crucial like to succeed in any field you want like not only software development but having said that so the learnings which I have got is not exactly you know I have got from my school or college so I cannot like lie on that thing so I did my engineering in electronics and communication engineering, as I've already said. So where only one or two subjects were there, which were actually related to the work I'm doing here, like I'm doing at the moment, like do the computer science thing. 
Also, like I believe even for CS graduates, like I have a lot of friends and I know a lot of people. So even I believe for CS graduates, the coursework is actually not sufficient enough. Like if you want to get into the industry, but like if you are someone in the college at the moment who are like who is planning to do further studies or is into research work or that type of things, then definitely like the course will uh, coursework will help you and you can like greatly benefit from it and also by maintaining a good GPA. But to get in the industry, to be a software engineer, then the coursework is not actually sufficient. So what I'm saying is that the technology, the tech industry basically is like rapidly changing at a very fast pace. So obviously the academic program or the curriculum cannot just keep up with it. Like it's, uh, I mean, it's logical, like it, it cannot keep up with it. So like to bridge this gap, I think like every individual should always learn on their side, apart from their like coursework or the program, which they are enrolled in. So like they can take up online courses, they can engage in side projects, they can solve problems in their free time and actually the dynamic nature of the tech industry will like not let you like settle like just for the coursework so that's what i believe got it that's a very balanced answer thanks for that and we will double click upon the skills that may be missing and skills maybe that were added to your coursework that helped you as well but let's yeah. take a step back uh, a lot of people when they look up to people who have joined PCG like me or you are just about to uh, kick off your career at Amazon question what kind of privilege does this person come from so can we take a step back and talk about your family background where were you born what were uh, dinner table debates uh, at your uh, household uh, and in your family I was born brought up in Assam so I'm basically from Guwahati Assam so my family, like my mother is like a, uh, you know, she works in the home itself. Like she does not do any like work outside. And my father has been like working as a HR uh, manager, like all throughout his career. So basically I think uh, my family is not very technologically like advanced, like who can like guide me in like these fields but definitely if i say on the education point of view then uh yes like they have provided me like with a very good education so they did not lack in those matters so like we have healthy discussions from like time to time like about our career and definitely my parents like want me to do like like great in life like so they have provided me with the best education they can and yes like that's pretty much it but like i won't say like becoming a software engineer where i am would like like they have that particular skill set to guide me but like they have obviously built the foundation for me so i obviously owe a great deal to them like See, uh, wherever I am today. Beautiful. And I completely conquer with that point of view. I always say that, especially in India, a good quality education or a good network would be a great starting point for you to move from lower middle class to upper middle class or upper middle class to then the upper echelon of the society. Yeah, so exactly. uh, completely resonate with that viewpoint. Maybe with that, we can take a step ahead and talk about your interest in software development, machine learning and AI. So at what stage in your college or at what age did you find that uh, you are falling in love with computers and you are falling in love with coding? So how did you find your love for coding and uh, largely software development? So right like from my childhood like i was interested in like problem solving and mathematics so which like in turn uh, helped me in taking up engineering in college so like after coming to college initially i was like not sure on what to do that's because like i didn't have anyone to guide me initially but like i have um, i talked with my friends then i have like heard about things like do this do that web development, Android development, machine learning. So these things, these terms were like 
very uh, new for me at that point of time so initially you can say i started by learning the computer science fundamentals using c and c++ language so that is like the basics but i would say that it was like very difficult for me at that time and i failed several times because like i have taken up online courses i could not complete them i just left in between like and not just once like it was happening multiple times like i was leaving multiple times because even just looking at a piece of code or even thinking about coding was like dreadful for me at that point of time so after that like i you know after one or two years of college i got to know about ai and ml so it was uh, a very new thing for me at that point of time so the main inspiration which came at that point was like from the limitless uh, possibilities that machine learning offer i have looked at like a lot of people uh, making videos you know by doing some machine learning projects and i felt that it was like really really cool so that was like you can say a turning point or like a starting thing like in my journey so after that point i have uh, taken up some courses like from online platforms i did side projects so it was like two years down the line from uh, two years like in the middle of the college journey so at that point you can like say that i was actually interested in ml and i have even done a research internship under a professor at an iit so and then i have went on to do some side projects related to it too so yeah so from that point onwards like there was no turning back so the person who like could not look at a piece of code was like i can actually look at code i can sit at one place and solve some problems and yes like after that like i have again learned about the computer science fundamentals data structures and algorithms and of course yes ml like so that was like the starting of my journey and the inspiration like as you can say very beautiful answer and i genuinely believe that anything great that you have to do in life including learning coding from scratch requires a lot of self motivation especially in a world of social media which has so many distraction we yeah. just want to check your uh, notification for a dopamine hit and you mentioned a very interesting thing that you did for example a research internship under an iit professor a lot of people watching this pod may not be from iit so mm-hmm. how does a person who is not from let's say iit land such research uh, internship so what was your process how did you grab that internship so basically the there are like multiple ways through which you can land a research internship so one way is like uh, there are certain programs that iits offer like internship programs so they will let you know like a few months back only so for example you are applying for a summer internship so the applications will be like uh, in the previous year itself so you can apply to that directly so that is one way the grades matter a lot in those things like you need to have a good cgpa so that is one way the second way is not like a very traditional way which i opted is like i just you know uh, so it was 2021 at that point of time it was locked down and i was at home so i was thinking that i should do something like this summer like i should do some internship and since i was already preparing and taking up courses like related to ml so i wanted to do a internship related to that itself so i just went on to the iit websites i just opened all the iit websites i looked at all the professors especially from the computer science and ec branches because that's where i can relate to so i just took their mail ids i made an excel sheet and i just messaged to each one of them individually like you know around 100 to 120 i can say like mails i sent at that point of time and then like a few replied like very few around 5 or 6 they asked me like what are my interests what are my requirements and also my cv so finally like i uh, connect, i connect i can connect with one and like he was like interested in like taking up as an intern and yeah so that's how 
I got the internship basically. Beautiful. I'm a huge fan of non-traditional answers and especially cold emailing <laughs> and reaching out with the right messaging. We are talking about five to six percentage response rate. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. In fact, less than that. And then you are saying that eventually you landed one internship uh, out of the many emails that uh, you had rolled out. With respect to Amazon, so you have had a very interesting journey, Pepper. A lot of people kind of get lucky and get into roles such as Amazon right after college. You have had a little different journey. You have worked with us, and I'm sure you have done other internships as well. And now you're joining Amazon. Could you shed a little bit light on what are the starting salaries for Amazon for someone, let's say, who's just starting out of college, or maybe um, someone like you who had one year of the internship experience and is now joining uh, Amazon? So Amazon level starting salaries. Amazon or like any fang companies like are known for like offering very uh, competitive compensation packages. So the starting salary for my role, like which is SD one, like can vary based on like factors like location or experience. Like I'm a fresher, so one good thing about these companies are like they generally do not do any partiality based on like college tires, like college one, one tire, two tire, that type of things. But yes, uh, the exact figures I think like it's industry wide same and it can be easily. Found on the internet, but like the overall compensation from Amazon actually includes a base salary along with some added additional components like signing on bonus, then stock options and other benefits. The overall package you can say is obviously very uh, like high than the average standard like industry average. What is the number? Number is around. You can say it's more than like forty. The and overall. Package. How long does it take for your stock options to be materialized, vested? The stock options. Um, it takes like four years. Yeah. And uh, very interesting. With yeah. that, uh, Beba, I would be very keen to move towards skills and knowledge. And uh, we had discussed this that now we would want to. step by step decode the path towards someone who is looking to build a career in mm -hmm. software development and especially ml and ai because you have done a lot of interesting projects with us also in machine learning so let's start with the basic and the most popular question is coding needed can a no code engineer mm -hmm. uh, or someone who doesn't know coding can he or she get into ai or ml uh, if yes what could be the challenges or if yes what are the options If no, then why not? Uh, so on and so forth. So, is coding needed? I think coding is needed. Like at the end of the day, for someone who is not a coder, if he wants to start, then he can start by initially learning the basics of uh, machine learning and AI. So that is like important, and even the computer science fundamentals. So that is like an important thing, even if someone is a no coder. After that, nowadays like. you can get by maybe without coding much like there are a lot of options like no code platforms are there for ml like there is ibm watson studio and from google also there is something i forgot so those kind of things are there for coding you have help like uh, you have chat gpt you have uh, github copilot so a lot of platforms are there nowadays that can actually help you like you know if you do not know coding that much but i believe personally that if you want to excel in this career path like software industry or anything related to machine learning then you need to have some basic understanding of coding uh, i can give you an example what i mean by this so say suppose uh, i know a lot of people who knows like english you know who can actually read a newspaper and can like understand what's going on but when you hear them speaking like they cannot speak anything much like it's like very broken english or anything same thing like in coding you may not like be able to write fluent code like you know you cannot write like code like like a proper like pro coder that's fine but you need to at least look at the code and tell like what's going on like if i provide you a code when you code, see a code on the screen you should be able to know like what's going on what's going on here what so that's the basic idea so if someone is a no coder and he or she wants to like uh like get into the industry and like want to 
become like a machine learning engineer or like an artificial intelligence engineer so if i have to stay uh, say the step by step process the first would be to like the learn the basics of uh, machine learning so these include the basic calculus algebra so the basic mathematics is obviously needed because a lot of the algorithms are actually derived from these things so that is one important thing after that you have to learn about the basics like uh, supervised learning unsupervised learning uh, reinforcement learning then like the different steps like uh, data pre processing how you do that how you handle missing values those are <coughs> the initial steps after that you have to learn about the different algorithms like machine learning algorithms which are there like random forest decision tree whatever it is there so you need to learn those and also even inside of artificial intelligence so it is like a very diverse field like you will have a lot of options on your plate you can either go for uh, like specialization in deep learning you can go towards nlp and you can even go towards reinforcement learning and like this type of things so those things will come later on like but initially you have to like learn the basics so you can take up online courses there is a very popular course in like coursera by like uh, andrew ng i think yeah. so you can take that if you are like a beginner it will help you a lot so yeah so that's pretty much it thanks sir uh, beba for that answer i think it's called specialized machine learning i could be wrong but uh, that's what my recollection is and uh, we will go on to define a lot of the terms <coughs> that you used for a beginner let's say what is github what is okay. supervised unsupervised learning etc let's now first talk about coding so our understanding at global tech initiative has been and we've been focusing a lot on python so let's could you just talk about the value of python and key libraries here and let's say if someone has to learn python mm -hmm. then what could be certain sources from the, where they can learn python python is like by far the most prominent language you will come across like if you are into machine learning or artificial intelligence because most of the code like it's in like today's world is written in python like in these fields so like yeah like i think everyone should learn python because like the syntax is like very clean and readable it's very easy to write and understand the code basically so it's basically like writing normal english only like even if you write like for loops or something like that it will feel like you are like writing in like normal english compared to like languages like c c++ like where it's far more like uh, complex i i would say compared to python so yeah so if i have to say about libraries then yeah so one of so the most commonly used libraries you can say are numpy which is for like the numerical operations pandas is there why don't you define what is a library for a beginner yeah yeah sure so basically libraries are something which are already made and you can directly use them to do your operations in python for example say you have to plot a graph using python so obviously by coding it like manually it, it will be like a uh, like little bit complex and i don't know like how to do that like me also so we have things called libraries which are already made uh, like in the language itself in python itself and you can use those libraries directly to do those operations so there is a library called matplotlib uh, matplotlib yeah so this is like a widely used library for plots so you can directly call that library into the code and you can directly use a function from that library to like uh, for your data visualization stuff so so yeah so that is one more common library and apart from this uh, that like if you are into natural language processing then you have like nltk library which has uh, you know a wide range of functions and data then you have tensorflow and keras opencv yeah so like these are the like commonly used 
libraries in python thanks for that answer bebhav and i really liked your initial answer on comparing coding to english because coding literally is a language yeah the yeah, language exactly. that you used to talk to a computer um i noticed your choice of words for mathematics for example you said that someone needs to know calculus if we were to subdivide mathematics for example statistics right uh, mm-hmm. understanding the basic of statistics supervised learning and supervised learning will come eventually on the data sets and then you're talking about calculus how important is uh, knowing calculus i'm asking because a lot of people have intimidation right they get intimidated yeah. out of uh, things like dy by dx integration differentiation so is calculus really needed or will only statistics will suffice actually calculus uh, in depth it's not needed if you learn about like machine learning from the core like the fundamentals then you will observe that algorithms like such as logistic regression so they have like things called gradient descent so in those derivations there is like terms like you know dy by dx so you do not have to need like uh, no like in depth but you at least have to understand like what it is signifying like what does dy by dx means like is it the slope and how is the gradient descent happening so like it's for your own understanding but uh, i would say that if you are like like a completely beginner no coder and you have to implement a machine learning algorithm then like it's not necessary that you need to know this stuff because the ready made formulas and the ready made algorithms are already there and you can directly use them into your in like manipulating your data and doing any operation you want but if you have to learn like machine learning from the core then yes like you have to know a little bit like the basics got it fair enough and let's say we define machine learning and artificial intelligence through an example and i am supposing that a lot of people watching this may not even know linear regression right yeah. so maybe we could take an example from ggi as far as a side project goes and i would want your opinion on what kind of side projects you do so at ggi for example 10000 people apply per year we have less than 10 percentage selection rate for the longest time a human was selecting based on certain criteria whether for example web of psychia applies to gji gets in gji or doesn't get in at this stage and then you and i we built a machine learning algorithm together through which through the last four four and a half years of gji we had certain data sets through which the machine could learn and then from that data sets of last four and a half year we are basically rather than a human spending time on the machine the machine is predicting whether let's say pepper psychia has applied in 2024 whether he gets in or not but yeah. here is the tricky deal the machine doesn't take the final decision there is a human a uh, layer over the machine who takes the final decision which is where i think the amazon famous example comes in handy i'm not sure if you know about it amazon was using machine learning algorithm for thousands of applications for careers that were coming to them and because amazon historically had male engineers the data set that amazon had to train the machine was to actually predict that women were actually getting eliminated from the application okay. portal itself because the data was just predicting what was there in the past right so i just thought that this is a great example to teach someone what could be an example of machine and what are the constraints within which machine works because it is supposed to give bias results based on the sample or the data set you have with that maybe could you give more example of certain side projects that people could do um and from where can they source those side projects to practice uh so like uh, if i have to say about the project that we worked on like like yeah so it was like a great project so one of the important things like in any machine learning project is the data so like you need to have a good amount of like data otherwise like your machine cannot learn that well that is one important thing next important thing is like the choice of selection of the model like which models are you selecting so i select uh, so even i was not sure like which model to select in a project so i would try with two or three different models which are like best suited and like i will see the accuracies of them what do you like mean by ac- different models are you changing the variables are you changing some logic uh, define no, that like okay i'll start from beginning so there there is one way through which you can build your own model you can train your own like neural network and go through that process and the other ways like there are pre built models that uh, machine learning provide uh you can find those models i think in the skikit learn library 
uh, if I'm not wrong. So there are certain models like uh, decision, uh, like trees, then random forest, logistic regression, and each one of them has their own like uh, qualities, like which on which data it can perform well. So depending on that, when we do a particular project, so we need to select the best suited model for that project. So generally, there are like two, three models you can try out with in your data. And by trying out, you can just keep a note of the like accuracy, precision, F1 score, recall these parameters, and then you can select the best suited model. So that's how it's done. And now coming uh, to your question about like what projects or side projects one can do. So, so that is like actually dependent on the interest area which you have so as i've already said you can be interested in like computer vision stuff deep learning things you can be interested in natural language processing things or you can be interested in like normal data processing like using ml models so the example that the project which we worked on was like like normally using the machine learning models on some uh, data so if we have to do that, like uh, there is like good platforms like available, like Kaggle is there. It's like a very popular platform. So if you go on there, you can like find like real world problems which are uh, yet to be solved or like solved by some pre uh, people. But you can attempt to go there and solve those problems. The data set and everything will be available there. And you can like take part on competitions there if, if you want to solve that. Apart from that, if you want to do some projects like on your own. So I did some projects related to deep learning and OpenCV. So basically it was related to image recognition and object detection. So those are some projects I did like, uh, yeah. And it depends on you completely, like what field you want to do the project in. Got it. Pretty interesting. So Kegel is one source through which they yeah. can source the projects on which they would want to practice their skills, right? Do you want to give any source for learning Python? How did you learn Python, for example? So Python, I think you can learn it on Kaggle also, like there is some document that is one way. But if you want to take like an extensive course on it, like you can go on like uh, Coursera or Udemy. So what I did was like I did one course from IBM. Uh, IBM Watson. Like, is that the same one? Yes, like, uh, yeah, from IBM, I did one course related to Python. So it was like a good course because it covered like all the basic uh, data structures that were there, like dictionaries, lists and everything and what Python did. But that is one way. And the second way is like, if you know, like even the basics of coding, like if you have coded in like any language, like C++, JavaScript, anything, then you can directly jump into uh, solving machine learning problems. And by looking at the Python code, like you can solve it. Like it's not that difficult, like because I have already mentioned that Python is a very readable uh, language. It's not very difficult to learn, but yeah, so that's how we can do it. Fair enough. And I think there is CS uh, 50 classes uh, on yeah. Howard's uh, YouTube channel as well. And then of course, we both know that if there are multiple sources then at GTI Feynman Fellowship within six months, we are teaching Python, we are teaching artificial intelligence, along yes, with yes. a mentor 10 week project on AI. And I in fact learned C++ in my 12th grade. And for the first cohort of Global Tech Initiative, I sat myself for coding classes. And I think I'm at an intermediate stage where you are saying I can understand code versus you are a pro coder so somewhere in between uh, i've been able to understand as a passive listener in the classes myself as well with that uh, Beba, we could move towards the industry insights there is a huge trend of uh, remote jobs in the world of software development people are selling this dream that you could learn software development and then get paid on us dollars for the us jobs as well what is your observation based on um, now that you are in this industry, how real is this and how practical is this? If I have to tell about remote jobs, then yes, like it's there and it's possible to get one actually, because a lot of the comp uh, startups basically, which are there situated, uh, situated in the US, they look for cheap talents, which like they find in India. 
like India and China, but like Indians are like good with you know English speaking skills, so they generally prefer in take, to take Indians. Like, but like the compensation which you get from these remote jobs are very high because of the normal like dollar INR thing. So that is one thing. Like it's possible to get, and also. it has increased after the like covid-19 pandemic because like a uh, the entire world was shifted towards like remote working even like companies here in india also like everyone was working from home so you can say that that was accelerated by the pandemic the remote working thing so even though a lot of uh, companies nowadays like are calling back their employees to the offices are like working on a hybrid model but like i'm talking if i have to talk about the startups which are working so obviously a lot of them would definitely prefer that their employees like stay at home and work for work for them because it will like reduce their costs also like office costs or anything like that so to get a remote job like if you want to get a remote job like an us remote job like you can apply through like uh, certain platforms are there like you can go to the net and you can apply there do you uh, know of any platform that you could name for our audience uh yes like i have applied it before like i think it was like angel list or something like that i forgot so there are two three platforms of that kind but like uh, they generally need experience like you cannot be a fresher like it's rarely that they they will hire a fresher so you need like one or two years of experience at least and like there are a lot of roles available like front end roles even ai ml roles are there so like that's how like we can apply got it and i think for someone who might not be as privileged to get into amazon let's say directly a good journey could be that you get some exposure by working for a startup in india yeah and then after getting that exposure by working for a startup in india then you can apply for remote jobs you could work for an indian client and you can still work for us client uh, or you could choose uh, either of them as well Uh, that's a very great answer. In fact, I was uh, recently told there is New York Life. It's an organization based out of US, and one of our fellows actually applied and is in process of going through AI engineer job as well. Uh, but I still wanted to know how scalable this is. Uh, it seems like from what you are saying, it's a sensible answer that they want uh, a little cost-effective answer, and yeah. Indians can speak English well, so it may become a reliable and a cost-effective answer. With that, um, I would want to once again think of the beginner who is watching this podcast with us, uh, Beba. What would be your advice for beginners from the point of view of what are certain misconceptions? that are there about working in ai ml that you may want to dispel now that you have done certain projects with us as well if i have to tell about like uh, misconceptions uh, related to ai ml so first thing is that like people believe that ai is like a, a magical solution for everything and it can like solve all your problems and it can like take away all your jobs like like it will replace everything so that is i think it's a misconception because no matter like how advanced like ai gets human effort and human like intelligence so they are not replaceable so i think uh ai ai will take jobs like like if you talk about jobs like uh working as a like petrol pump or like cashier jobs so those kind of jobs obviously ai and technology will take up but eventually the hu- human kind will like shift towards other jobs because if ai like takes uh, takes away 10 jobs it will create 20 jobs that i i believe that's how it works so if you even uh, think about the entire if you look at history like 50 to 100 years back there was no internet so you can take you can say that like internet uh, social media has taken away a lot of jobs but also it has created the double or triple the number of jobs like it has taken away so that's one way to look at it and there is a term like artificial general intelligence i am sure a lot of people have heard about it so till now like like whatever ai we have like chat gpt or mid journey or everything so they are not agi because they can only assist in particular tasks like chat gpt for text and everything dal e is there for image generation but artificial general intelligence is something like which can do every task 
that is capable of doing by human like if you have watched that um, popular like movie robot like that yeah so that is that that kind of thing is like an artificial general intelligence so till now it's not achieved yet but like people are working open ai is there they are working and even i think google are working on it so if that comes then definitely it will be a game changer because it it would be able to do a lot of tasks and jobs so that is one thing and one more misconception which i have uh, observed is that uh, people believe that like ai is like only for tech companies like only technology companies use ai but that's a misconception i think because nowadays like even if you look at like healthcare companies or finance or retail any companies like they will like use ai or they will use like anything software related so that's how that ai has like penetrated the market like entirely i believe beautifully said at the same time for example recently paytm let go of 1000 employees because yes. they found that uh, their work could have been easily replaced by machine learning and ai as well and i genuinely believe even if new jobs will be created people will have to be ready to be able to take those new jobs as well because you are not just talking about becoming an ai engineer we're talking about first learning the mindset of coding then learning python then doing a lot of projects as well and uh, with that maybe we can talk about your future aspirations as well given that you are just starting your career what are your personal career goals in the realm of ai and ml and how do you see your next couple of years uh, panning out my personal goals you can say is like at the moment like i want to learn about learn more actually so i'm kind of a beginner in ai ml like even if i have done projects so i don't think that i know that much you know so my goal will be to learn as much as possible i generally read articles like i try to stay updated with the latest tech trends which are going on so that is one thing and i will like even in my work i try to like even in the work which we have done together i have learned a lot because like uh, like hands on work is hands on work is actually far more better and far more effective than like you know doing some course and learning i believe so doing projects is far more superior and you can learn like a in lot of uh like a lot faster that that is what i believe so my goal is like even i'm not sure but i can think of some entrepreneurship like opportunities in ai also because i believe that in the coming decade like most of the jobs which will be like created will be like related to ai from ai so thinking about like entrepreneurship in that field will not be a like bad bet so that is one thing i think and yeah so basically continuous learning will would be my main goal so that like you know i keep myself updated yeah beautiful i completely agree continuous learning is not an option today it's a yeah. mandatory thing that everyone needs to do you could be 40 you could be 31 like me or 22 like you uh, but we all have to be on that continuous learning path with that however we are almost at the end of this pod and uh, i would like to understand uh, what's the one best piece of advice that uh, you would like you would have gotten at some point of time and you would like to pass on to aspiring ai and ml or software engineers as well so i'll start a little bit back so a lot of people think that like if they like crack some exam crack some job then it's done like they do not have to study after that like even i look at like people all like around me also so they think like if i crack this exam if i crack that job then my life is set i don't have to do anything but like that's not like that i believe that the thing that is like most important for us is to like learn continuously like about the new trends like maybe like i am not from a software field maybe like i have studied commerce or something but it's my duty that i know what ai is because like it has like impacted the lives of so many people and it will continue to impact so that is one learning and learning should not be like limited to a particular field it should not be like i am a software engineer so i won't learn anything related to finance 
or anything related to business so that should not be the case like you should be open towards like learning anything and like keeping yourself updated yeah so that i'd say that's a very beautiful message we're talking about interdisciplinary learning and that is the way yeah you would be able to connect the dots all right pepper i had a great time and uh, doing this pod with you and i'm sure that this will come in handy to a lot of young uh, professionals or beginners who are aiming to build a career either at amazon or have a career in ai and ml as well and uh, yes like i said very meaningful given that i have known you personally and professionally before as well and uh, with that uh, we call the pod off ciao thanks yeah thank you